All right, in this uh, short clip, I'm gonna show you how to change the um, oscillating servo motor on a Robopong 1050, 1055 and 2055. Uh, there's two different types of servo motors. The early models, The early models, the ones that have these ports on the back, they both of them are black, both of them are black. They actually have this servo motor. Okay, it's quite different to the new one. I mean, it looks the same, but it is very different. The new type controllers had the white serial plug on the back and the very new ones on the 1055s have got the USB connector on the back. They take this servo motor. Okay. Now I'll show you the procedure that we use to change it. Okay, let's prepare the camera. Let's zoom out a little bit. We've got a small Phillips screwdriver. The easiest way. There's four screws. On the top. That'll expose. That'll expose the, um, the servo motor. Now normally your servo motor can fail or it can become intermittent. It's one of the common problems that can occur with that type of servo motor. Okay, so that's three out. Now, before you take the fourth one out, hold the head because the head will collapse if you're not very careful. So I'm pushing down on the cover whilst I put my tools down. Okay, now, cover comes off, the head, I hope you can see this in the camera, the head just lay gently on the ground. Mm. The servo motor's inside the top of the unit and it is connected via this plug. Okay, it just pulls out, just take note as to which way it goes in, you don't want to put it in backwards, okay? So the yellow wire, which is the signal wire, actually goes towards the back of the robot. Okay, we're up and running. As you can see, my unit's a um, 2055. as close as we can okay we've got three screws that actually hold the unit on take note as to the position of uh, this little pointer here it's directly down the center that's something that we're going to have to realign once we put the new unit back in now we undo the three screws. And there's one in the front. Okay, it just lifts out. All right, 
notice that the wire is passed underneath the actual servo motor when it's put back in. We undo a little pointer. Don't lose it. Okay, and it simply it lifts off. All right. So we get the, the new unit. We put it in. See the way that we've actually got the wire pass through without it being crimped anywhere. We put the three screws back in. I hope you can see this. Yep. I'm trying my best here. It's not easy uh, videotaping black or recording black. And the third one. Okay. We then take our unit and this one's going to be a difficult one. We take our unit and we plug it back in. What I might do, I might actually take my unit out of the uh, recycle net and So we plug our unit back in. Okay, so we've got our unit plugged back in. So here we go. So I've mounted the unit back in to the recycling net tray. Okay. Now if you have a close look where my servo is positioned, what I'm going to do, try to get all this on, on camera all together. Uh, we've got our controller connected. Power it up. I hope you can see this. Uh, click on the menu button. We go down to setup. Click the OK menu button. Go down to OS Calib. Can you see that? Mine's set on 25, which is the factory default. You then click the yellow button. Okay, now watch what happens. Did you see my server move over? My server motor moved my pointer over? Okay, so that is supposed to be straight down the centre. So what we do, put that centred, let's try again. We're going to mount it. 
So it's straight down the center. And then we're gonna put our, where are we? Can anyone see this? Where is it? Where is it? There it is. We're gonna put our screw back. This is all very difficult. You're doing it whilst you're trying to do it. Now just to show you, you can see that the actual pointer has moved across. So what we'll do is we'll hit the yellow test button once again. And you can see, so it's moved down to the center. That's the correct position where it should be. All right. Now, let's zoom out a little bit. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our head. We're going to position it in the bottom locator. Hopefully you can see there's a little bottom locator with a pin. Whilst this is still in the correct position, locate it in the top. As you can see, it's located correctly. Again, difficult to do. going to pop the head up. We're going to turn the robot around and we're going to do the uh, here's the minor calibration. All right now let's have a look at this. Turn our robot on. Hit the menu button. Go down to setup. Hit the menu button. Go down to Ossif Calib. Mine set on, as I said, 25 factory calibration. Hit the test button. And then what'll happen? is the robot is going to spit out three balls, okay? Now you look at the landing spot and mine was uh, a little over to the forehand side. So let's take it all the way up. I'm taking it all the way up just to show you what happens. You can see that. Take it all the way up to 50. Right? So 50 is all the way to the forehand side. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to go back to... Instead of 25, which was the factory default, we'll try 24. Okay. Okay. So it's, it's, it's bang on the line now. So it's done. So my, my um, oscillator calibration is required on 24 instead of 25 just to get it down the center now if you've got any questions don't hesitate to uh drop me a message um, if you're not sure which survey to use just send us a photo 
Um, you can easily take the cover off and see which one you've got in there. Um, other than that, happy table tennising.